Hello everyone, so my name is Sam and I'm with GSK Wealth Builders. Uh, welcome to the channel. And today I'm going to talk about how to buy crypto in Canada. So this is just a quick overview. I'm not going to walk you through the steps um, like on my screen, but I just have some screenshots for you. So we'll start. So for the intro, what you're going to need is obviously you're going to need an internet connection. Um, if you want, you can use a VPN just to uh, you know, hide your traffic from your um, from being tracked. Number two, you're going to need a laptop to do the trades or um, a laptop that can have Google Chrome. And then you can use Google Chrome to get a wallet like MetaMask wallet, or you can do it on your cell phone, but that's not secure because if you lose your cell phone, you lose your crypto, right? So, and then of course, the most secure way to store your crypto is to buy a hardware wallet from Ledger or Trezor. Do not buy the wallet from eBay or any other third party source because it could be hacked. You want to buy the wallet directly from Ledger or Trezor's website. Okay, so those are the three things you need. Now, the first rule of crypto is to control your private keys. So what that means is in crypto, you have a wallet right so you're gonna when you open a wallet you're the only one who can access that wallet however if you use coinbase or um, other crypto.com or other websites what's gonna happen is they have private keys and they give you access to your coins when you log in however um, these companies are not insured and they could be in sketchy countries so if they go down if they go down you lose all of your money and it's already happened hundreds of times so key takeaway for controlling your private keys uh, the expression not your keys not your coins refers to needing to own the private keys associated with your funds the private keys are like the secret phrase or the secret password that has the access to your account online um, the person owning the private keys is the one deciding how the crypto assets are spent for example they could just say, we don't like this person, close your account. There's nothing you can do. What are you going to do? Fly to Malta? So um, owning your private keys is very important. So if you don't own this, you're entrusting your crypto third party, like an exchange or the fiat gateway. If you do own your keys, you have complete control over how to use your funds at all times. No one can take your money from you. No one can, no one can uh, seize the funds. If you have the keys, um, you can leave it there. No one can get it. Owning the keys also means you're responsible for the security, though. So if you lose them, uh, for example, you wrote down the private, the secret passphrase on a piece of paper and you lose that piece of paper or the paper disintegrates in a fire, that's on you. So there's more responsibility um, and you need to be aware of that. OK, so I just took this slide from Hex Graphs and I just wanted to show why it's so important to own your private keys. So if we start back in, I think it's like 2011, Mt. Gox, right? Mt. Gox failed. They lost six hundred million dollars worth of crypto. No one got it. No one got it back. Right. Uh, Bitcoin had inflation bug, but that's fine. So then OK, OKX. So OKX was an exchange. People had their coins on there. Resters got founded. They didn't get their coins for like 30 days. Cryptopia, they got hacked. Everybody lost their coins on Cryptopia. Um, you know, Ripple was delisted for a while, but that was more to do with the security and the SEC. Binance was hacked. I believe $30 million was stole from Binance. Quadriga CX was based out of Vancouver. Everybody lost their money. It's about a billion dollars who had their money on these exchanges, right? Um, Bitmax, the founders were arrested. KuCoin was also hacked for millions of dollars. So this is very common. Every year, there's a ha every week, there's a hack in crypto. And that's why it's so important to control your private keys and make sure no one else has access to them. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the crypto to fiat gateway. That's what it's called. So the crypto to fiat gateway is a way to turn dollars into uh, into crypto so if you have a hundred dollars and you want to turn it into crypto you most likely have to use a crypto to fiat gateway which is an exchange or a third party where they have the keys um, but the the most important part is to just use them do the transaction and then withdraw and take control of the of the coins so there's either a transparent fee or there's a hidden fee the transparent fee might be five dollars you know a trade the hidden fee might be that 
they're giving you a different price of Bitcoin that's on that's on the internet. So for example, if you're on one of these exchanges and you want to buy Bitcoin, just go on your phone or a different, you know, connection, check what the price of Bitcoin is. It's $60,200. Now they might say it's $60,150. All I'm saying is you should be aware of the fees that you're paying. What is the cost to play the game? Right now, the average transaction fee can be between $1 and $100 per transaction. So then you're going to want to rethink of the way that you're buying. You might not want to buy $100 at a time if the fee is $100, right? You might want to buy thousands of dollars at a time. Um, so yeah, now Fiat Gateways, they want KYC. So you're going to have to hold up, you know, uh, your, your passport holding next to your face or something like that. All right, this is me, and then this is like another paper with a date on it, and you're going to have to do that, right? They need to know their customer. There's no other way around it other than using uh, an ATM or peer-to-peer. -peer. So the most anonymous way to buy would be peer-to-peer -peer off of a friend, off of someone that you connect with, or an ATM. But the ATMs can have high fees, you know, 15 to 30% cost of doing business. Okay, so in 2021, the best uh, fiat or the best fiat to crypto gateways are coinsquare.com, which is in Canada. You can use e-transfer coinbase.com. You can use your credit card or a U American bank card. Some Canadian banks do it. Shake pay. You can do interact or wire transfer. I've never used shake pay, but I know people use it. I don't, I don't advise shake pay, but worst case scenario, if there's no other way you can do it. Okay. Um, there's one that I didn't list, Crypto.com. So Crypto.com, um, you can use e-transfer. And then Kraken.com. If you wanted to send a large sum, you want to use one of the best, right? So you're going to send a wire to either Coinbase or Kraken, right? If you want to send $100,000, you're going to go with them. You're going to do a wire. You're going to talk to the customer service rep. They're going to give you a, a, a number. You're going to route it to them. Three, four days, it's going to be in your account. Then you're going to buy. Okay. So the overall process is you buy your ETH or US dollars from the crypto to fiat gateway. Number two, you withdraw your ETH US dollars to your ETH wallet. Or if you bought Solana, it would be Solana wallet, right? And that's taking the possession into your private keys. Um, I am token is a good wallet for cell phones and MetaMask is a great wallet. And then for Solana, Solid and Soulflare. Uh, then step three is you store your crypto and you can trade it for other coins, either on the Fiat Gateway by sending it back to them, trading the coin and withdrawing, or using Uniswap, which is a decentralized exchange. The fee, though, will be between $10 and $100 to use Uniswap. So this is just a screenshot of what Coinbase would look like. So you go to Coinbase.com, you put in your name, uh, you choose a password, then they're going to ask you to link your cell phone number so you can have two-factor authentication. Then they're going to ask you to upload your passport. Then they're going to ask you where, you, where you're from, where you live, blah, blah, blah. It takes a couple days to do that, right? So then they're going to ship password, driver's license, national ID. So KYC issue. So KYC means know your customer. So they're just making sure you're not a money launderer or terrorist or whatever. So KYC issues that have come up. Your bank account name does not match your ID name. Um, so if you're, you know, if you go by your nickname or something on one card and your nickname and your bank account, they, they got to match. They got to be identical. Your home address should match the address that you're typing in or the address on your driver's license. Uh, and then the photo must be clear. Okay, so this is what Coinbase looks like on the inside. So if you look on the left-hand side, you have buy and sell. So you'd be able to buy with your dollars. Then you'd have send. That's where you're going to send the coins to your wallet that you've made for yourself. And that's how Coinbase works. With ShakePay, it's the exact same thing. You're going to add your funds. You're going to be able to buy and sell. And then you're going to be able to send to the wallet. Um, with CoinSquare, the same thing. You're going to be able to hit fund. Uh, you can do an e-transfer request, and you can request a transfer. Now, remember your bank has a limit to how much you can e-transfer per day. Some banks are $2,000, some banks are $5,000, some are $10,000. So you can never request more than your daily, um, your daily rate. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention on coinbase.com slash earn, 
you can actually earn free crypto. So you can earn, I think, 30 to $60 just by doing quizzes. So when you go to Coinbase Earn, they're going to say something like this, you know, learn EOS, and you take this course. It's a two-minute video. You get $2 for a two-minute video. So that's a way for people just want to get started right away. Um, but you still have to KYC. You still have to show them your ID and your address and things like that. Okay, the final step. So um, you've you know you've signed up for one of these crypto to fiat gateways. You've added your bank account or your credit card. You've purchased crypto. Now it's sitting there. The final step you have to withdraw. You have to withdraw. Always withdraw. Uh, Coinbase is fairly secure. The rest of them. I don't really know. I don't really know. So I think Coinbase even got hacked in the last couple of weeks, possibly. So um, yeah, so you're going to open up your MetaMask wallet or your Solit or your um, I am token wallet, and then you're going to find the address on the wallet because every wallet has its own address, similar to an email address, except it's like 64 characters. So then you're going to go and you're going to send it to that wallet, and you're going to see here. So for example, this is what a wallet looks like, and this is the address here, right? So it says 0x, that means Ethereum, and then you click on it and it will copy it, then you can paste the wallet in and send your coins away. The exchange or the fiat gateway probably is going to charge $10. This is what a Soul Flare wallet is, so this is the address here. So then you're going to click to copy, and then you're going to paste it in the, the send transaction, and you're going to transfer to your wallet. So for Ethereum, it could take two minutes to two hours usually less than 15 minutes for solana you're looking at seconds um, as long as they send it right away so that basically wraps up how to buy crypto in canada um, it's very simple steps it's very tedious at the beginning but once you get set up you're good to go forever um, and always take your coins off of the exchange remember that so if you have any questions just shoot me uh you know shoot me a comment below if you like the content if you want to see more of these videos shoot me a comment just let me know what video you want me to shoot and also we have a telegram group for to ask questions there's about 150 people in that telegram group so if you have any questions it's you know we have from newbies to very experienced people that are uh in the telegram group 24 7 chatting about crypto so thank you very much and the link is below so thank you very much and once again my name is sam uh, this is the GSK Wealth Builders YouTube channel, and please like, share, and subscribe.